Hello and welcome to another video demonstration of LabVIEW Communication System Design Suite. I am Amy Matlin, an engineer at National Instruments. And in this video, we will walk through an example from the software-defined radio community found at ni.com slash sdrcommunity. In this example, we are using two USRP transceivers in LabVIEW Communications to transmit data using an orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, or OFDM encoding method, to increase spectral efficiency. We will observe this by looking at frequency distribution, phase pattern, and constellation plot representations of the transmitted and received signals. Before starting, we have downloaded the code for the streaming OFDM transmitter and receiver example from ni.com slash sdrcommunity. We have opened the OFDM TX simulated program because I first want to show you all how to simulate the OFDM transmission and reception based on quadrature phase signal generation impairments before transmitting data between real devices. Under the Parameters tab, we will go ahead and set the IQ rate to 5 megasamples per second, the number of data bits to be repeatedly streamed to 1,250 for this example. Now we will navigate to the Simulated IQ Impairments tab. The impairment parameters let us simulate the signal with added sources of error that might be experienced in real communication systems during the up conversion step in the transmitter. Let's set the gain and balance to 0 dB, which is essentially turning it off. We will set the frequency offset of the transmitted signal to 250 Hz. This will be turned into an offset phaser that will be used to compute an impaired data signal. Next, we will set the quadrature skew to 1 degree such that the in-phase and quadrature components are not exactly 90 degrees out of phase. We will set the sample offset to 4. For more information about the sources of error in IQ-based RF signal generation, you can reference the white papers at ni.com. Now if we go ahead and run the transmitter program, we can see how the magnitude spectrum, the phase pattern, and the outgoing constellation plots have been populated. Then switch to the OFDM RX simulated program and make sure that the IQ rate is the same that was entered in the transmitter program. Then if we run the receiver program, we can see the frequency domain spectrum and phase plots of one OFDM symbol. The phase plot shows pattern of four distinct phases. The magnitude plot results from sending the IQ data through the Van de Beek algorithm, which is a timing and carrier frequency estimation algorithm that helps the receiver with synchronization. The unequalized and equalized data plots show the I and Q of the unequalized and equalized portions of the received signal. Now we are going to compare our simulated transmission to a live real-world transmission using two NISRP 2922s. You can use the NISRP2922 or another radio that supports your desired carrier frequency. To begin, open the TX program in your downloaded project. Under the Parameters tab, enter the device name or IP address of the NISRP transceiver that you would like to use as a transmitter. You can find the name or IP address of your device by going to the NISRP configuration utility. Next, we are going to use an IQ rate of 5 megasamples per second, a carrier frequency of 910 megahertz, and the same number of bits as our simulated example, 1,250. The transmitter antenna is called TX1. For this example, we will use a quadrature amplitude modulation order of 4. Now we will go ahead and run the transmitter program. You can see that the populated graphs look identical to those we saw in the simulated transmitter. Now we will open the RX program. Under the Parameters tab, we want to make sure that the control fields match the parameter controls in the TX program except the device name. If we run the receiver now, we can see the behavior of the received signal on this real communication channel. Now we can really tell that the magnitude and phase plots do show an almost exact behavior as the simulated signal, but with more error due to slightly greater generation impairments and possible channel interference. We can also tell that the data is being successfully transmitted to the receiver. Let's take a look at the block diagrams of the transmitter and receiver to help us better understand what the code is doing. In the transmit block diagram, the USRP transmit session is initialized. The local oscillator frequency is set to be equal to the carrier frequency plus the IQ rate so that an appropriate intermediate frequency can be reached by the transmitter. Next, we go ahead and configure the transmission with our chosen gain, carrier frequency, and IQ rate. 
Then what happens is that we enter a while loop that won't stop running until the stop button on the front panel is pressed. This is because we want to continually transmit data. The steps to accomplish this continual OFDM transmission are as follows. First, we generate our data. A pseudo-noise sequence with an order of 9 is generated for the length of the bits you have specified. In this demo, we specified 1,250 bits. A QAM symbol map will be used to convert this stream into quadrature amplitude modulation symbols. Due to the logarithmic relationship to the QAM order, the number of bits per symbol is 2 because log base 2 of 4 is equal to 2. And the number of total symbols is 625 for this example, since we are sending 1,250 bits. Next, we split up the array of QAM symbols into sets of 125, which is a relatively common symbol length for OFDM systems. Each OFDM symbol is interleaved with a complex reference value whose magnitude is close to 1, then padded with zeros on either end to protect against channel impairments. One zero in the center splits this frequency domain signal into two parts. Next, this frequency domain signal is converted to its time domain equivalent by using the inverse fast Fourier transform, or IFFT algorithm. This is done because it is a clever way to map the data onto orthogonal or uncorrelated subcarriers. Data that would normally require guard bands using frequency division multiplexing to prevent subchannel interferences no longer requires guard bands because the subchannels are allowed to overlap since they are orthogonal. A cyclic prefix, which is a repetition of the last 64 bits of the sequence, is added to the beginning of the sequence. It is transmitted and then removed from the time domain sequence when it is received to help remove intersymbol interference. Finally, all of the OFDM symbols are concatenated, scaled down, buffered with more zeros, and transmitted. This basic process repeats until the user decides to stop the program. In the receive block diagram, after we open and configure our USRP receive session, then start receiving data, a reverse process is followed to decode the OFDM transmitted packets. The incoming time domain signal is cropped to reduce the effect of generation impairments and channel interference. The cropped signal contains an OFDM symbol. Each OFDM symbol is sent through the Van de Beek algorithm so that the place to start sampling OFDM symbols can be estimated. This algorithm also helps the receiver tell if there are any offsets between its own carrier frequency and the carrier frequency of the transmitter. The cyclic prefixes are removed for each OFDM symbol in the time domain and detected frequency offset is removed. Then, each OFDM symbol is transformed back into the frequency domain, zero padding is removed, and the symbol is equalized. Using the same generated fourth order QAM symbol map, we demodulate the data to retrieve the original bits that were generated by the pseudo noise sequence. Well, that concludes our demonstration of OFDM transmit and receive using the NIUSRP platform and LabVIEW Communication Systems Design Suite. The code for this example and many others is available on ni.com slash SDR community. Come join the conversation and learn more about how NI can help you discover software-defined radio.